Next slide. This is the last slide. Here is the man. And these are his instruments. His geological map, his, his geological hammer, his compass, a letter which he used as a geological instrument. He used to correspond with people like mad, with other geologists using the same instruments. And he left us a legacy that still baffles me. And Argon said in 1912, in 1922, when he addressed the International Geological Congress, he said, Mesdames et Messieurs, if the master were to return among us, he would touch perhaps a detail of a structure here or account for an episode of defamation differently there, but he said he wouldn't touch the main plan of the edifice because it stays true. And you'd be amazed that after so many years, almost 100 years, what Argan wrote remains true. So that's the merit of geology. It isn't to belittle anything else. But if you do your geology with these simple instruments, you'll go very far. Of course, then you'll go even farther if you talk to your geochemist, your physicist friends, etc. But if you don't do this, those friends of yours will get nowhere. That's the basic message I want to convey. Thank you. Thank you. This geophysicist won't let me off the hook. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think uh, one of, one of the, the key messages here is that we should actually talk more together. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that we are one community and what happened to geographers should not happen to us. <laughs> That's really important. <laughs> So, Jalalak uh, accepts to take questions. Are there any? Or comments? Oh, you can't be that so, gullible. So, <laughs> so now, now you're spoiling his mood because he says that, said at the start that, that there must be someone annoyed. Yes. Half of you, I hoped. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bilal, you don't count. You're one of us. <laughs> Do you want to? No. Okay, there's a microphone here. Where? Over there. Oh, so poor Bilal has to move all the way there <laughs> in this old and infirm age of his. <laughs> enjoyed your lecture. Um, I remember you gave one uh, to stratigraphers a, a few years back in, uh, 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 in Turkey. And um, the, at that time, I uh, realized that your knowledge of the history of geology is incomparable and that uh, uh, <laughs> we have so much to learn from you. Uh, so I think those are my comments, basically. Uh, that your lecture today uh, really, really put together uh, f for us. Uh, 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 how do I describe it? A historical perspective that is, uh, we are, we are, it is despairing. Uh, from Bilal, what you're trying to say is what Goethe had already said. The Geschichte einer Wissenschaft is the Wissenschaft selbst. The history of a science is the science itself. Genau. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anke! Anke is right behind you. Chilal, thank you very much. I would like to uh, relay a question that is not my own question, and I would have not posed it that way because uh, I know my own answer, but I think everybody else, and I know that you will enjoy to answer the question, so I do think that uh, 
Our distinguished colleague Paul Hoffman is not here, but he was the one who has raised the question. He's um, challenging you in uh, giving Edward Seuss all that much credit because he says that Edward Seuss has not given due credit to the Precambrian, to the Protozoic. So oh, because Paul is be... ignorant. He hasn't read no. what Edward <laughs> Seuss had written. The, right. first, the first chapter of Das Adlitz der Erde's third volume starts with the Precambrian. And Zeus says, this is what may have happened, but he says, we don't have enough data to go into any more detail. Now, Paul, being a Canadian, he was born on the Precambrian, and at a time where we can date it, map it, analyze its rocks, so he's being unbelievably unfair and somewhat ignorant. So can, can you extend your, your answer also for your work of, on the uh, Altaids? Uh, in, in what role does the Precamber and the Protozoic rocks play in your uh, brilliant restoration of that? Uh, very good point. Let me, let, me, let me start by pointing out why my very good friend Dan McKenzie has published two papers about the nature and formation of cratons. Being a good geophysicist, well, he started life as a physicist. He explained everything beautifully. But what he explained, what he described, doesn't look anything like the cratons. And the Altaid showed us that the reason why cratons like the Canadian shield have vast, most of it, has a metamorphic grade at the surface between prenite pompeliite and green schist at most. And the Altaids have the same thing, they have the same structure, they have the same sequence of events. And when I looked at places like Yilgarn, or the Barberton Mountain, or even Isua in Greenland, I went to the field in all those areas, and I was really flabbergasted about the similarity between the Altaids and these cratonic nuclei. And Altaids now is a cratonic nucleus forming in the middle of Asia. And if you leave it alone, thermally, for a long time, it's going to be a craton. And I think Kevin, in his preface to the uh, uh, Arkeen Greenstone Belts volume of Martin DeWitt and Lou Ashwall, he wrote a, a short preface. But I would recommend anybody interested in the Precambrian to read it. And that's, that's what Kevin pointed out. So thank you very much, Tilal. Some of you may have, um, I can see, it looks like there's no more questions. Um, so some of you may have wondered why uh, we are not presenting the medal here. But uh, the tradition is that the union medals are presented during the award ceremony. So if you want to see Tilal receiving the medal, you should come here in this hall, I think it is, uh, tomorrow uh, late afternoon. I was and given a sneak preview. The way they arranged it this year, the big union medalist, please translate or read as the old farts, will be there. <laughs> yes. And the younger medalists will be there. So they want us to appear together. So the younger generations will say, here is the past, here is the future. <laughs> <laughs> so shall we give Chalala a hand? <laughs>